guys this vlog is going to be about our lovely love-hate relationship with the ego and the interesting dynamics that we have with the ego how we uh, get so annoyed by it but at the same time it's like we have this fascination with it well when <clears throat> I titled this vlog same shit different drama what really came to my mind is that um, the ego will feed us the same thing. So imagine your life like a um, movie script. You're watching it like in the theater. And your thoughts are what you project onto the screen. So if you are in this fearful state of mind, listening to your voice of fear, which is synonymous with the ego, you're going to be projecting the same shit onto the screen. The drama is going to look different, but really it's the same stuff. Okay, and it will con you'll continue to project the same thing onto the screen until some healing takes place. Okay, because that's that's what the perception is there for, for the voice of love to come in and heal our perception of the situation that's going on. Now, the problem isn't that the ego is doing this. Uh, of course, in Miracles teaches that usually the, the thing is that we believe in the ego. So we focus on it. We tend to give it a little bit more attention that it probably needs. And we feed into this idea that, oh, yeah, okay, this must be real because these are my thoughts. Um, and then we get into this mode of like, oh, that damn ego, he's so sneaky or she's so sneaky, whatever you want to call it. But really, it's our belief in the ego that begins to um, cause the problem for us. It, there's only really one problem the Course in Miracles teaches is the belief in the separation that we've had. So any little a disturbance that we have internally all it is, it's a reinforcement that we're believing in the separation that we've detoured. And not just that we've detoured, but we've forgotten. And we're reinforcing the separation by believing in this voice of love at that moment. So the healing really then really needs to take place in order for us to come back to this idea. And then it won't be projecting the same stuff on the movie screen. So basically, this has all happened to us in some form or the other. So for instance... Um, let's just say, let's take a hypothetical example. A friend tells me that um, I'm going away the same weekend as her graduation. She's getting graduated and that's the same weekend I'm going away. And she tells me that, you know, she would like for me to stay, but she understands that I have to go. And I say, okay, cool, so I'm going to stay. And she says, no, 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 but I want you to go. And I said, no, because now I feel bad. Now you want me to stay, so I'm going to stay. And she says to me, uh, no, I don't want you to feel bad. I want you to go. And I'm like, are you sure? And she says, yeah. And then I go away and then I feel bad because I went away. So basically it's all guilt. Okay. I'm feeling guilty first because I was going to go away and she's telling me I want, she wants me to stay. And then when she tells me, go ahead and go and I go, then I still feel guilty because now I went. Okay. So you see what I'm projecting on the screen. It seems like two different things. It's all guilt. That's it's the same thing. You're feeling guilty about one thing. And then as soon as that thing's gone, it's been replaced with something else. Okay, so it could be the same thing with fear. So you're in college and maybe you're fearful you're not going to pass a class or you're fearful that you're not going to pass your exams or you're fearful you're not going to find the right guy, whatever the case may be. Then you pass the class, you grab a boyfriend and, you know, you graduate. And then all of a sudden now you're fearful about, oh, well, now I need to find, oh, I'm never going to find a job. And, oh, this guy's never going to ask me to marry him. And, oh, what if I don't find a job in my field that I went to school for? So all that's really happened is you've taken the same projections that you put onto the screen. Your belief is still in the ego. You're still reinforcing the separation. Okay, so it, it hasn't changed. You're watching the same movie. It looks different. The drama looks different, but the shit's the same. The shit is that you're still believing in the voice of fear, so you're still projecting the fearful stuff onto your movie screen. So yeah, you've replaced, you replaced the, you know, finding the boyfriend with now keeping the boyfriend, and you've replaced, you know, going to passing the test with now finding a job, but it's all just fear. So what we really need is some recognition and awareness to realize, okay, this is our voice of fear. Don't spend too much time there. Once you realize it's the ego, you don't need to sit there and have a chit-chat with the ego. You can just say, thank you very much. Let's get back to love. Okay? As Now, I'm not going to say as quick as possible because there is a process to our feelings and all that stuff. But what I'm saying is we tend to then get stuck sometimes on the ego. And you'll quickly get caught into the ego again. So if you focus on the ego too long, then you'll get back into, oh, I listened to my ego. Now I feel bad. And guess what? You're back into the guilt all over again. Or what if I never get this stuff? You're back into the fear all over again. And I've, I've heard a lot of people can get overwhelmed with the spiritual journey just because there is really no getting there, guys. It's like a lifelong thing. So, you know, don't, don't get stuck in that ego by feeling like, 
you know, you're supposed to get it right away or because it's supposed to look a certain way because you're still projecting the same stuff onto your onto your movie screen. You're still projecting the guilt. You know, you're still projecting the fearfulness. You're still projecting feelings of inadequacy, anxiousness. And it doesn't matter how small the disturbance, internal disturbance is, it's still reinforcing the separation. That's why Course in Miracles says, you know, there is no order of difficulty in miracles because one is not bigger than the other. It, you know, in spiritual, we we, cause, we make these levels, but in the spiritual world, there's no such thing. There's no, nothing different. So it sounds dramatic, but forgiving like the guy that killed your mom or forgiving the guy that gave you the finger on the street is the same thing in spiritual terms. It takes the same, it's the same kind of forgiveness. It, it's the same miracle. Okay, so don't think that, oh, just because I'm getting annoyed at my, you know, on my test or just because I'm fearful about a boyfriend, oh, no big deal. No, you need to bring the voice of love into everything because anything like that is still the same shit that you're reliving over and over and over again in different kinds of dramas. So it's important to kind of bring the recognition in that that is what it is. It's the ego. You recognize it. You see your shit for what it is. You go ahead and you feel the shit. And then you go ahead and you reframe it, which is a wonderful step that I do all the time. And one of my best ways of reframing anything is forgiveness. So as soon as I see it come up, I don't even bother with messing around with the ego and, and figuring what the ego did now. No, I see it as my projection of guilt onto the screen. I forgive it. And sometimes it takes me longer than others, but then I'm able to move on. And sometimes you'll see yourself forgive, 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 forgive in a continuous chain. It's okay. You know, as long as how, however many times it takes for you to just continuously feel that healing but sometimes that happens where I'm in a public place or something comes up or someone says something and then I forgive and then all of a sudden someone else says something and I'm like, oh, again? I'm like, okay, I got to forgive again. And then someone else says something or I see something and I'm like, okay, I need to forgive again. I felt that feeling again. But I try to be very keen and aware. And those are the, that's the word that I love to use. Be self-aware. Have an extreme sense of self-awareness where I can pick up easily and I don't let the little ones go because I understand that no any disturbance any little shit that comes up for me is just as equal because then I'm going to start building you know emotional disturbance inside of me or I'm going to get I'm going to get shitty inside is what I'm trying to say and then you're going to start doing this thing that I call spiritual hoarding you're going to pile up stuff inside without addressing it so really recognizing that the ego is feeding you the same stuff recognizing that it is your choice it's not about focusing on the ego but it's about your choice it's your choice to shift from the fearful voice of the ego into the loving voice of love and then it's about reframing all of that and the best way that i would suggest which ties in nicely with what i was talking about last week is forgiveness just forgive it forgive the forgive the shit that you're seeing forgive that you're reliving, reliving the same drama but i hope this kind of helps understand a little bit more about what the ego does and not only that, but how we propel the ego. So understanding the ego really just means that the ego, this is what the ego does. And really looking at it as like watching a, look at a bird. A bird is going to fly because it's a bird. So think of it the same way. The ego is going to do what the ego does because it's the ego. So there's no sense in sitting there and analyzing the ego for 101 hours and, and saying mean things about the ego and calling it all these sorts of names because then you're right back into the ego. It's best to just accept that, hey, these are the projections. My choice I can minimize the ego by choosing or I, it, it just goes away when I choose love and I don't have to replay the same thing over and over again. That's a lot more powerful than spending time focusing on the ego and what the ego is up to because really that's just feeding the ego. And the ego is always going to be in survival mode. That's just what the ego does. So the minute you drop one thing, it's going to tend to pick up the other thing most of the time. Okay, and then just with practice of releasing and coming, the things that the shittiness will still come in. But as you practice just the recognizing and letting go, recognizing, letting go, recognizing, letting go, and realize, hey, you know what? It's the same thing playing over and over again until I bring in some forgiveness, until I bring in the voice of love and I choose to heal. And it's okay. That's why you practice with things and you get better at them. So I encourage you not to get frustrated to realize that everything we do requires practice for us to get better at it. And to also, you know, don't spend too much attention. Don't give too much time to the ego. Just forgive the ego. Let the ego do what the ego does. You do what you do, which is, you know, get yourself back home. Get yourself back into love mode. And then the ego can still do what the ego does if the ego needs to be doing what the ego does, which it will. But you will not put your faith into the ego. And that's really what reinforces the separation um, between us and God or between us and universe or between us and love. 
what really reinforces is our belief that we have separated. If we believe that we're returning or we already love, then the separation would not exist and then the ego would not be doing what the ego is. It, it wouldn't even matter, sure. It could be, still be the ego, but it wouldn't even matter to us because we would not believe in that separation um, that happened internally a long time ago. So I encourage you to do those things, to recognize the ego, to not only recognize the ego, but then quickly leave it alone. And I hope you have a wonderful week. Um, please do the best that you can not to be reliving the same shit in different forms. Be aware of it. Own it um, and transform it and return back home. I encourage you to leave me any comments that you have on my website. I love talking to people. I love interacting. As you can tell, I'm a chatterbox. So please leave me comments. I will definitely respond. Uh, if you feel compelled to contact me for any amazing and fun coaching on Skype, please contact me because I also love, love, love to coach. And it would all be based on this kind of stuff, Course in Miracles stuff. That is what I coach. That is what I teach. So have tons of fun and tons of love. Bye.